Hello, hello, everybody. Thank y'all for joining me today. Um, so, I am going to teach y'all how to monogram a cookie today. I recently did a set for um, my friend's baby shower. Hey, Angie. Um, where we did these cute little monogram baby bibs. Um, I need to show you all a picture of that. I'll put that in the comments. But I got a lot of good responses about how those monograms looked. And several people asked me how I did that. So <clears throat> what I do is I use a projector. It looks like this. I bought this from eBay. Um, it's been almost a year ago now that I bought this little doodad. And it's a little wireless projector that I can hook to my phone. And I can project this image onto a cookie. And I normally project that directly onto the cookie. And just do what I'm about to show you directly on the cookie. But, hey Patty! <laughs> I know most people, um, when they're first starting out in cookie decorating, they don't typically have one of these projectors that I was just showing you. Here it is again. Um, this is the idea, Pico, if anybody is looking into getting a projector. I highly recommend it. It makes life easier. But until you've decided whether or not you want to purchase one, because I know that is kind of a bigger purchase, um, <clears throat> until you've decided whether or not you want to purchase one, I think that the page protector method that I'm going to show you today is super effective and it gives you the same look that you're going for. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. So. The first thing you need to do to create a monogram cookie is to flood a cookie. And I've done that. I've flooded one red so that we could see. It's a little wonky on the sides. This was kind of a uh, didn't make the cut cookie. <laughs> it's got to be um, worked on a little bit. But anyway, I just wanted y'all to be able to see the monogram really well on this bright red background. But you want to flood a cookie and have that completely dry. I like to have it completely dry so that I don't risk messing up my flooding or denning that when I start putting my monogram on. The next thing you'll need to do Whoa! Had a little crash here in my kitchen. Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, the next thing you'll need to do is make your monogram. So, I went to a, shop, a site called Chic Fetty. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. It's C-H-I-C-F-E TTI slash monogram maker um, and I can link that in the comments below but it allows you to just click on the letters I believe you double click those or you can scroll down and choose the letter here you choose your letter and you type what you want that letter to be and then you choose your font so you can do different fonts or you can do the ones that I'm doing today. You can choose all kinds of different monogram and fonts and different letters. So you make that monogram and then instead of printing, we want to be able to do multiple monograms on one page because in all likelihood you're not going to do just one monogram cookie. If you're going through this trouble, you're probably going to do at least three or four. So what you'll do is you'll click this little cloud over here and that's going to download it as a JPEG. So you'll click that JPEG and that's going to download that. And the way that I made this, hey Anna, the way that I put this onto my paper like this and I did multiple monograms is I went through Canva. Canva is a free design tool. It's like graphic design. I think um, the thing that it's probably most comparable to would be like an Adobe Illustration program. But it's free. They do have a paid plan where you can get a few more features. But I've found that for the most part, free gets it every time. And what I did was I just clicked create a design. After you've created a login and everything. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. You're so sweet. Um, but after you've created a login and you've gotten into this program where you can use Canva, you'll go to create a design. You'll click U.S. letter document. And that's just like regular printer paper so that's what I always go with and then you'll take that JPEG that you just downloaded from online and you'll drag it up here Oop. sorry I have my computer in tablet mode so that I can show y'all with it laying flat and it's kind of a pain sometimes 
But anyway, you drag it onto here and you can place as many of those as you want. I think I've actually already got it uploaded here from when I did this the first time. Yes, I do. But it'll show up in your uploads and you'll drag it over to your page. And you can do as many of these as you like. You can size this however you want it to be. So if you're making a really small cookie, which you are more patient than me if you can do a monogram on a small cookie, you could do as many of those as you want and you could make them as small as you want. I think there is a way that you can do grids on here and it'll tell you what size you need them to be. But if you're doing a really large cookie or even a cake, you could do, you can make it bigger or smaller and then you just see how that is clicked with the blue square around it. You'll go up here to this button where it says duplicate and you'll just put as many of those on there as you need for the cookies that you're going to make. So let's say you're making four for like a dozen or something. You just make as many as you want and then you'll go up here to download and you'll click PDF print. You can click on print, print letterheads but that's going to try and get you to pay for them to print it and ship it to your door and we ain't got time for that. So you'll just click download here. You'll download it, print it, <clears throat> and then that's all you have to do on the computer. You can set that aside. And then you'll take that page that you printed and place it inside a page protector. Once that's inside the page protector, then you can go over it with the icing. And the icing is just going to slip right off of there after we pop it. So I'm going to show you how I pop my lettering. And letter work is something that you kind of have to get used to. You kind of have to practice with. But once you get it down pat, you can go fairly quickly with it. Um, this bag probably honestly needs to be cut a little bit narrower. But this is how I got my bag cut. It's pretty thin. Um, I made sure that my icing is good mixed up because if you're trying to use a day or two old piping bag and the icing is separated, that's going to ruin what you're doing. Anytime you're doing anything with cookies, you want to make sure that your icing is thoroughly mixed. You can leave a little icing on the counter for a couple, three days. Usually it won't hurt it at all, but you just want to make sure it's nice and homogenous before you get started. Um, the thing with lettering with icing is just like lettering when you're doing hand lettering in a journal or um, if you've ever watched a hand lettering video on YouTube, um, people who do that with pens, that's a great way to practice your icing skills or to understand your icing skills with lettering better. Um, they talk all about the upstroke and the downstroke. So I'm going to show y'all on a different cookie that I have here. When you're doing an upstroke, you're making it thin and you're just kind of dragging it along with you. And on that downstroke, you're going to squeeze a little more and it's going to be a little thicker. Upstroke, downstroke. And so you're just thinking of changing the pressure. When I'm making those nice thin lines that are kind of dainty, I'm doing really light. Um, hardly even pushing on the bag at all. I'm mainly kind of sticking the line of icing down and pulling it from the tip of the bag as I barely squeeze. Um, when I'm doing these thicker lines like this, I am squeezing really hard on the popping bag. I'm trying to maintain even pressure so that it makes a nice, even, thick line. And you'll see how that translates when we get started with our monogram. So I've just done my own initials because it's easy. <laughs> and I'm going to start here. I've got just a little bit of icing. And you'll see that. There we go. Hey, Deidre. I've got just a little bit of icing coming out of the tip of my bag. And I'm going to kind of plant that onto my paste protector. And with a very, very little pressure, I'm going to pull that around these thin lines here. And when I'm popping really thin lines, and really when I'm doing any lettering, I like to be pretty close to the page. Then as I see my lines get thicker, I'm going to increase my pressure. And I'm going to use my popping bag to kind of even that out as I turn. And I'm continuing to do those thick, thick lines with more pressure. And I see 
Oh, yeah, I told y'all. It's that syrupy consistency. I didn't get it mixed up good enough. <laughs> That's okay though. That's a good lesson on mixing up your pop and bag really thoroughly before you get started. Okay. Here we go. No stress. That's a little bit harder to do with the cookie though, if it's already been flooded. So if I was doing this with a cookie, that would have been pretty stressful. And while I'm mixing up my pop and bag a little bit better to avoid that, happening again. Tipless popping bags are the key to making this work. If you try to do this with a regular popping bag and um, like a round tip, it will be okay. I have MacGyvered it before and been all right, but it's just not like using the tipless popping bags. I reserve my nice tipless popping bags. Um, I buy cheap ones and I buy nice ones. And my cheap ones I use for regular everyday flooding. My nicer ones from, um, let's see, I believe these are Cookie Countess or Cookie Cutter Kingdom is what they're from. They're a little bit nicer than the cheap ones I buy in the pack of like a thousand. Um, and they're perfect for doing lettering because you can get that really, really fine, fine tip. And it's really flexible. So we'll just do that again. We're doing really low pressure as we come around. Nice thin lines, increasing pressure as we come across the thicker part. Decrease as you go across that thin part and increase your pressure again as you see those thick parts in your letters. Now, being that I like to make things difficult for myself, I picked the curliest font that I possibly could have to do this. It would probably be a lot easier with something a little bit more block font or something like that. Um, and you do not have to do every single thing that's on the monogram you made. You can kind of make up your own rules as you go because no one's going to see the original monogram that you printed off. If you see that your icing's going to run together in a certain point, kind of like this was, or if you see that you're going to like it better by not putting icing in a certain place, just go for it. Don't stress about it. Again, I'm keeping that low, low pressure and just pulling my string of icing along. And now I'm coming to a thick part in this letter R. So I'm going to increase that pressure. I'm pushing just a little bit harder. I'm staying close to the paper. And now I'm letting off as it tapers at the bottom of that thick part of the R. And then I'm just barely pulling with hardly any pressure as I go back around. Then I see that there's another thick part coming up, so I increase my pressure just a bit. I bow down a bit more closer to the paper. And then I decrease the pressure. I come almost completely off as I just barely pull what's left of the icing in the tip back around for that R. And we're just going to continue as we do the S over here. I'm not sure if I got the letters in the right order. I always get mixed up. Is it first name on the right and middle name on the left? Or middle name on the right and first name on the left? I was thinking it was the right, but I could be wrong. And so that's what it looks like to you pop it. That's how you pop it on this um, page protector. And if you were doing this with a projector, if you downloaded this as an image, put it on your phone and projected it with your projector, you would do that the very same way. It would just be directly on a cookie. And the shadow of this monogram would be shining down onto your cookie. So now we are going to transfer. This one is already dry, the one at the top that I've already done. It has a small break in it, but I think we're going to still be okay. Um, this is the same monogram. It's just in dried. Well, 
It's been dried for more than 24 hours, but it needs at least 24 hours before you transfer it. Thick icing dries a little bit faster than thin icing, but you still want to make sure it's got plenty of time to dry. And you can see that this has broken just a tad. Don't panic, we'll be able to fix that. You just want to peel the page protector back as you very, very gently lift the royal icing off. And I'm going to turn it. I'm just barely touching this as I hold it. And I'm going to place a few little tiny dollops on the thick part of that royal icing transfer. Try to center it as best as I can. Again, super, super gently. You don't want to put too much royal icing on there or you'll end up like me and have a little bit of a mushed spot there. Hey, Lena. Um, and if you do end up with that little mushed spot, never fear. There's always a fix in cookie decorating. What's so comforting about it? There's always a fix. I'm just grabbing a paintbrush. Take a paintbrush, a thin one, just go around and pick up that awesome. That kind of smushed out and wipe it onto a paper towel. Pick it up onto the paper towel. No biggie at all. And next time, I will remember to put just a little bit less royal icing on the back of my transfer. Red is the world's worst about transferring. But that's kind of an advantage because if your royal icing isn't wanting to come up, just kind of blend it in and it will turn red because of the pigment that's in the flood underneath it. Now, this little piece came off <laughs> and as you can see I just broke it but that's okay don't panic if it's being a little delicate grab a palette knife and use it to flip it up onto that palette knife that'll help you get a hold of it better and again just a touch of icing you could use tweezers for this if you're more skilled with tweezers than I am I'm not very skilled with them, so I don't trust myself when it comes to tweezers. And again, just give that a little lock. If it's kind of flowed out on you. And we're going to finish up with the top part of the S. Again, if this has a couple breaks in it, it's no biggie. We can fix that. If it crumbles all to pieces, then we're probably not going to be able to salvage it. But we had three main pieces still that we could salvage. So. I believe there was just a tiny piece up here at the top that kind of went wayward. So on these broken parts, just place a little ice in there. Wipe your paintbrush and paint it down and blend it until it kind of looks less broken. Do the same here. Just blend it a little so it looks less broken. And if you didn't know that it was broken in the process of making this, then you would never see it when you're looking at that actual cookie. Cookie decorating is less about knowing how to decorate the cookie. It's more about knowing how to fix problems when they come up, I think. The decorating is the easy part. The fixing mistakes is the hard part. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Renee. So, you can see that I have just a small gap right up here in that R. And I know from looking at the picture of my monogram 
that it was supposed to continue over into that S. So I'm just going to take my icing and continue as if I was popping on top of my monogram on the page. And use my scribe tool to kind of fix that up, coerce it into where it needs to go. And there we have it. That is your monogram cookie without using a projector. So that is the much cheaper than a projector way to do it. Like I said, I do recommend getting a projector if you plan to do lots of cookies um, or have a business doing them or make it your serious hobby just because it makes your life easier. But there's definitely ways to get around having a projector until you get to a point where you feel like you'd like to have one. Um, the bags that I use today, you can order these on Amazon. These are called Cookie Cutter Kingdom. And you just put your icing in there and you snip the tip really, really, really close to the bottom. And you've got the perfect monogram popping tip. Um, also, this consistency is a toothpaste consistency. That's been the thing that's helped me the most is getting the consistency right. You don't want this to be like your flower popping consistency. Um, so like when I pop flowers or succulents like these, I use a straight out of the mixer, just really, really almost dry royal icing. Um, <clears throat> it's really, really thick. It's not quite to a cookie dough consistency, but it's just shy of it. Um, when I'm doing this, Let's see. I'll dig a little bit out of the top of this bag and let y'all see. <clears throat> it's just a little bit wetter than I do with my flowers. It doesn't completely flow back together like it would if you were flooding, but it's to the point where you can kind of work with it and get it to blend smoothly. It's not completely destroyed if it needs to be blended a little bit but that's about a toothpaste consistency so if you squirt toothpaste out of the tube it looks about like that usually I'll take an ice cream scoop out of my mixer after I finish making my recipe and just pop like a fourth a tablespoon or excuse me a fourth a teaspoon of water into that ice cream scoop if that much and that makes the perfect toothpaste consistency but if y'all have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them as best I can. Um, like I say, you know, I'm still learning too. I'm always learning um, about cookie decorating. So if you have tips for me, I'm ready to hear them. And if you have questions for me, I'm ready to try and answer them. But thank y'all for joining me today. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.